Hi, welcome to this lecture on UDP port scanning. So let's take a brief introduction to UDP. As you hopefully remember, UDP is the user datagram protocol. UDP is another transport layer protocol, just like TCP is transport layer. But the difference is that UDP is, provides unreliable delivery, which means that you send a packet and you pray for the best. Uh, packets can be lost, they can arrive out of order, et cetera, et cetera. There are no guarantees about what will happen to your packet when you try to send it. So uh, TCP, on the other hand, will guarantee that your packets will arrive in the order and things like that. UDP provides absolutely no guarantees. If a packet's lost, it's lost. But the usefulness of UDP is that it's good for time-sensitive applications. So things like voice over IP, some forms of streaming multimedia, et cetera, et cetera. So UDP is useful for things where you actually don't care if you lost some data because by the time you would go to retreat to resend it, its usefulness is already lost. So for example, if I'm on a VoIP phone call and it loses three milliseconds of data, well, getting it later doesn't help me because I've already missed that part of the conversation and life has just moved on. So uh, UDP definitely has its usefulness. Now, the only header information for UDP that we actually care about are the source and destination ports. Um, the other two fields that it provides would be length and checksum, and we're not worried about those right now. Uh, UDP is connectionless, which means that you never establish a connection. So in TCP, you establish a connection before you send and receive data. In UDP, you never establish a connection. You just send and receive packets. That's it. So uh, an example application of UDP is DNS, you know, the domain name lookup service. So the way that DNS works is you send a UDP packet to port 53 of a DNS server with a host name to look up, and it replies with a packet that has the IP address of that host name. This entire process takes only two packets, uh, one packet to initiate the request and one packet to get the reply. With TCP, this would require at least six packets, three packets to initiate the connection, one packet to send the request, one packet to send the reply, and one packet to finish and reset the connection. So how do we do port scanning with UDP with Nmap? Well, the command line option is dash S capital U, and this sends a UDP packet to the port that you're interested in. And the way that you determine the status of the port based on the reply is that if we receive a UDP reply, that means the port is open, because that means that some service on that port sent us a packet back. If we receive an ICMP unreachable message, that means the port is closed. That's the way that the UDP standard specifies it, is, if, is that if you send a UDP packet to a closed UDP port, then this machine should reply with an ICMP unreachable message. ICMP is a different protocol from UDP, but that's just the way that UDP is set up. If we receive nothing, <laughs> then that means the port is either open or filtered. Filtered for obvious reasons, because that might mean that our, uh, our packet that we sent was just dropped, and so there would never be a reply. But the port might also be open, and the reason for that is that I might send a UDP packet to an open port that has a service on it, but the service just might not reply. It doesn't have to. So there's a lot of problems that we come up against when we're trying to scan for UDP, and the main thing is that it's really hard, and the reason for that is that there's no connection, so there's no guaranteed transmission of packets like we have in TCP. In TCP, if the port's open, I can guarantee a response if I can get to it. Um, and the biggest issue is that some services only reply if the packet sent is what they expect to see. So for example, um, if you send a, a mangled packet, so a packet that doesn't have useful information to a DNS server, it's not going to reply to you. It's just going to drop your incorrect packet. And so you, if you don't know what service you're looking for, you, you might not even get a reply if there is a service there. The other issue with UDP is it but by the definition, it's not reliable. So you never know if your packet sent or their reply got dropped. It's also very slow to do UDP port scanning, mostly because of there's a lot of times you'll never get a reply and you have to wait on timeouts. Uh, another big issue is that I said before that if the port is closed, you should get back ICMP, an ICMP reply. Well, ICMP replies are, are kind of big um, compared to normal UDP packets. And so most operating systems will rate limit how fast they send them. So will most firewalls, et cetera, et cetera. So if I want to quickly scan a machine, even if it sends me ICMP replies, uh, the host operating system might limit how fast I can send those. 
So instead of being able to scan a thousand ports, thousand UDP ports very quickly, uh, the host may limit and say, well, you can try to scan a thousand ports, but I'm only going to send back five UDP, five ICMP replies a second. It, it, those get rate limited. It's just a frequent thing that occurs. And that makes UDP, again, hard to scan. So summing up this very short lecture on UDP port scanning. UDP is a connectionless protocol with absolutely no guarantees on what's going to get to the other side. Um, scanning for open UDP ports is error prone and slow. But I will say that sometimes patience is rewarded because um, for attackers especially, there are vulnerable UDP services that they can be looking for. But in general, you're not going to do a UDP scan just to scan all the ports on a machine and see what UDP services might be running. A UDP scan would typically be more targeted. You'd be targeting and looking for specific UDP services on a variety of hosts because that would be a more reliable thing to check. Thanks.